Egypt's president's taken his most decisive step yet to assert power over the influential military, sacking two top generals. The defence minister, who served as the country's interim leader after Hosni Mubarak was ousted and uh, also dismissed, uh, was the chief of staff. Morsi started to move more boldly against the army after an attack by militants in Sinai that killed 16 border guards. Let's now talk to Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar. Hi there, Pepe. Uh, thanks for being on the line with us tonight from Hong Kong. Tonight I see there. Now, is the sacking of these two top generals a sign that the military's decades-long rule is coming to an end in Egypt, do you think? No, it's much more complicated than that, Kevin, in fact. Uh, the emir of Qatar went to Cairo. A few hours later... Morsi made his move. What does that tell you? Mm. It tells you that, first of all, Morsi got $2 billion from the Emir of Qatar personally. Instead of Morsi going to Mecca and talking to the House of Saud, this is something that happened two weeks ago, the Emir of Qatar actually went to Cairo, talked to Morsi, gave him $2 billion as a starter, and immediately afterwards, Morsi made his move, which was a counter coup against the previous coup against the Muslim Brotherhood. It's so remember. layered. It's so layered, is isn't it? It? So, uh, it, it? It's so layered, as you're saying. So a foreign hand at work here. Let's talk about these new appointments. The new defence minister who's also taking over as the head of the military councils, a former intelligence chief. He also studied yeah. in the US. What can we expect from him, then? <laughs> well, uh, basically, from the Muslim Brotherhood point of view, they don't want any more frictions between SCAF and the president. So we can say that for the moment the score is Muslim Brotherhood 1, SCAF 0. The problem is the military, even if the junta is realigned now or rearranged, they control almost 40% of the Egyptian economy. Egypt is broke, has no money. They have an annual deficit of $36 billion. So these $2 billion from Qatar, it's a little bit of help, but not much. Mm. because. Uh, Tourism in Egypt, they used to get like five to seven billion dollars a year in tourism. Nobody's, there's no tourism in Egypt for months now. And uh, they have five billion dollars from the, renting the Suez Canal. And they have like four or five billion dollars from remittances from Egyptian workers. They still have this enormous gap. Where is the money coming from? Qatar cannot pay for uh, Egypt's debt indefinitely. The House of South, now they are horrified that, in fact, uh, Morsi, when they asked for money from the House of South two, two or three weeks ago, the House of South said, OK, we'll study the situation. Now Qatar steps in. This means that now the Muslim Brotherhood and Morsi as president, they are extremely powerful against a rearranged and weakened junta. The junta, they don't have a response for the moment. So uh, I, I'm betting in the long run that they will let Egypt collapse in terms of being practically defaulting or broke or unable to pay its bills. And then maybe later they will rearrange another Egyptian military coup and go back to power. I can so see you coming it, from there. I can see you coming from... I mean, so you kind of answered my next question, really. I was going to ask you, what about the uh, dismissed generals? They've already been offered new roles as advisors to the government. Is that just a face save? Oh, yes. This is, this is cosmetic, Kevin, totally. In fact, uh, this is, you know, medals, a medal of honor, savior of the nation, that kind of stuff. This is just rhetoric and uh, medals, <laughs> not much. Uh, uh, I wonder if they'll accept. Ex except, um, we should expect something to happen, not immediately, in terms of a counter coup by SCAF, because the junta is still there. E even if they are pre uh, their prerogatives in terms of that constitutional amendment, which transferred powers from the presidents to them. Now, uh, Morsi voided that completely. They may have some cards to play. And don't forget, very good relationship with the Pentagon. I'm sure a lot of people in Washington are horrified about the Morsi move, and they really are. The Israelis are totally freaking out with the Morsi move because now they say that Egypt has become an Islamic dictatorship. So there could be some counter coups from foreign actors as well. And, and final, I mean, a, a, and Israel and Saudi Arabia. And a final thought on the streets. We've seen President Morsi's supporters um, rallying again on Tahrir Square. They're happy the top brass apparently have been ordered to resign. Do you think we'll see new clashes over this with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and the military rallying support as well, briefly? 
Yeah, yes, absolutely, Kevin. I was talking to a very good Egyptian writer, journalist yesterday. He was explaining to me, basically, that the Muslim Brotherhood is not widely popular in Egypt. They are very well organized. They have four or five different strands. They managed to organize quickly. They won the elections, but it, this doesn't mean that they are popular in the long run. In the long run, if Egypt has more secular political parties, including the people who started the revolution in Tahrir Square, the whole situation will change and the Muslim Brotherhood cannot count on remaining in power indefinitely in Egypt. Pepe, thanks for your thoughts. Good to have you on the program. Pepe Escobar, Power there, Thank Asia you. Times correspondent in Hong Kong.